Hello, YouTubers. It is Ben Chan, and I just barely lost all my music. Um, I first wanted to thank all of you for watching my videos. I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate you passing the information on to everybody else so that they can watch the videos as well. And I also wanted to tell you that I will be trying out for this YouTube Symphony. If any of you have, have, are not familiar with that, you just go to youtube.com forward slash symphony, and you'll find out all about the YouTube Symphony. Now, the purpose of this video, is, there's actually two purposes. The first one is to show you how I'm going to play this piece, because I think that uh, if we're going to have a YouTube symphony, if this is going to be the very first time, I'd like the symphony itself, the, the, the players that make up the symphony, to be the very best that they possibly can. So I do realize that the logic also means that if I'm sharing how I play it, I may have a lesser chance to get into the orchestra, because everybody else is going to be playing as well as I do if they learn the same techniques. Now, that's OK for me. Uh, I want the, the, it, the orchestra to be the best that it can be. But at the same time, I'm going to keep practicing, so you know, I'm going to give it my darndest to get into this orchestra. Um, the second purpose is to give every one of you a chance to upload your videos to my video, so as a video response, and then if you will do that, then I will go ahead and personally watch your video and give you some, some feedback one-on-one. -on -one. And I think together we'll be able to figure out how this piece works the best way, and I also appreciate any comments that you'll post on this, on this video page. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at this piece. I'm just going to cover the basics, and then later on I'll upload a video of myself playing it once I know this a little bit better. So, let's we'll start off at the top. If you have not already printed out the music, it's three sheets of paper, and you should be able to print it off of that uh, symphony channel that I just mentioned, youtube.com forward slash symphony. Oh, and a disclaimer, I am not at all affiliated with the symphony channel. I do my own Ben Chan Violin channel, and it's completely disassociated. But I would like to be a part of the YouTube Symphony, if, if at all possible, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so it starts at Allegretto, uh, 96, um, that's the, the metronome marking. And this little pits, there are two of them, and there's a little circle with a, a, a line up. And so what that means is a Bartok pits, which basically means, and this is how I do the Bartok pits, there may be different ways to do it. I take my two fingers, my thumb and my first finger, and I pinch the string, and then I pull up very slightly, and then let go. I'll do that again. Ready? Now don't pull too high. If you pull too high, first of all, you're going to go out of pitch, and second of all, you might snap your string. So not too high. Maybe like, oh, I don't know, about this much up and down. I don't know how much that is. Maybe an inch? Well, that's probably too high. So half an inch, how about? And then what that does is it gives a snap. It, the, the string comes down and snaps back against the fingerboard slightly, and if you do that with 40 violins, as well as all the other instruments, then it makes a pretty cool little slap sound. And that's, I think, what Tan Dun is looking for here. So when we first start off, we hear the lower strings do this pit, and then we do it. So it goes lower strings, so boom, boom. And then after the fermata, now it's the other way around. It's us first, and then the lower strings. And then we go lower strings. Okay, so I'll do that one more time. So boom. And then... Does that make sense? So it's lower strings, then us, us and lower strings. And this is the first violin part, by the way. Okay, and then you have this. Okay, all these trills and, and so forth. And we're doing this with the clarinets and a couple of the other woodwinds, as far as I know. And so we don't have to overplay this. What The most important part that I can see is the accent. So it's the beginning of your note. And also, don't push too hard because there's a lot coming up after this, this, this beginning. And so save your strength because you want to be able to play the rest of it. And particularly at measure six, the very first quarter note of measure six, which is on the uh, and of the first beat, so they have a tie. That very first one, don't play too much there because when I listen to the recording, you can hardly even hear that note because we want to hear everything else. Play it very softly. So I'm going to start at measure five and I'll demonstrate what I'm doing here. Ready? And then an immediate uh, decay right after that for forte piano there. Um, and so if you do it this way, then you'll conform to the overall sound of the orchestra. You want to be able to play accents where you need to hear them, but also back off. You don't want to play too much. Um, so that's the beginning of this piece. And then we get into the, at measure 20, 31, it looks like. So we have the trumpets come in. And 
and then something else, dun 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 dun, then again, dun 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 dun, dun. and then we come in on the fourth measure. I have my trusty metronome here to figure out how fast 140 is. It's about this fast. Let's talk about this technique where you drop your bow. It's a pretty cool little technique. And what I'm doing is I'm hovering over my uh, over my strings using my bow. I have my hand totally relaxed here, so I'm not trying to, to, to grip it at all. It's just a natural grip that keeps the, the bow in place so I don't drop it. But I'm basically here, let me do it really slowly. things that are very important here. One is you want to keep your bow hair flat because you the bow hair naturally wants to bounce. And if you've ever gotten nervous and you're playing a really long note and it sounds like this, there are two things that happen. One is you're gripping the bow like crazy and the other is you're tensing your arm. So what I want you to do is I want you to do the reverse of that. I want you to do relaxed hand and relaxed arm. But start above the string and let it fall. And when I say let it fall, don't let it fall like this. That's wimpy. You get, see, without anything else, if you're just letting your bow fall, there's no sound. What I want you to do is use your arm weight. So your arm falls with it. And also, keep, make sure that that very first note before you have the ricochet, the, this is the ricochet. Before you get to that ricochet, the note before that should be very, 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 very short. And so when you're going between strings, you want to change the elevation of your arm. So if you're on the G string, your arm should be pretty high. If you're going to do it on the D string, for instance, it's the same concept, only I'm changing the height of my arm. Or if on the A string, or E string. And so that way, I don't have to change the technique only have to change the, the angle of my arm. It does take a little bit more bounce on the E string because you're not quite vertical. On the G string, it should be pretty easy because you're pretty much vertical. And you should be able to do this for hours. Not, I'm not suggesting that you do that, but you should be able, it should be so easy. So those are the keys that I know of to help you articulate here. And um, that's one of the major techniques used throughout this piece, and so we won't cover all of them. There are some passages where you have accents, for uh, that accent on the melody. For instance, um, let's look at uh, 98. So let's start off. Now, 140, again, is about this fast.